Hi everyone, it's Laurie. I hope you're all doing well and this video finds you happy and healthy wherever you are in the world. I'm going to be doing another unboxing today of the Witch's Moon subscription box. I talked about this last month um, when I did August's unboxing of the Witch's Moon box, but I have been watching these unboxings of the Witch's Moon for a long time and I really enjoyed it. And um, the channel that I used to watch where they did the unboxings all the time isn't doing it anymore. And I kind of just thought I, I might want to try to subscribe myself and keep it going for myself as a little gift because I turned 50 this year. And so as a gift for my whole kind of 50th birthday year, a gift to myself for as long as, you know, I can keep it up. And so I'm going to do, I want to do a quick tarot card draw to kind of see maybe how I might want to approach the whole video. I, I decided to use the Lioness Oracle Tarot because it has kind of a spacey theme. And with the Witch's Moon subscription box, when the company sends out the announcement every month for the upcoming box, they usually give you a little hint about the theme for it. And the theme for this one is something like, um, we are all stardust. So it's going to be something to do with space or stars or astronomy or star seeds, something like that. I don't know. I was kind of hoping it might be holiday related because uh, the the autumn equinox is going to be coming up. So I was kind of hoping there might be kind of something a little bit witchy or whatever related to that that um, holiday map, and I think it is right. So I don't know. We'll see what might be in there. But I wanted to do. Um, a draw to kind of see how I might approach the unboxing of this, like kind of what attitude to take or you know what approach for me to have. And thinking about star seeds, stardust, that sort of thing, I thought this is kind of a spacey deck and this might be a nice one. So I'm just gonna do pull a quick card to see how I might kind of get the most out of this unboxing or make it most interesting for you guys since you're gonna watch it. And let's, oops, there we go. Okay, let's just see. Okay, Six of Cups. So, Six of Cups is usually nostalgia, looking back to the past, thinking about um, childhood and, and that kind of thing. This particular card seems to show planets, I guess, in the background roses and dolphins. When I was a little girl I was a swimmer and well my whole up until I was 18 I was a competitive swimmer and I used to love dolphins. I always wanted to be a dolphin when I was a kid if that was my animal. That was the animal I wanted to be because I love swimming. I still love swimming now. I love to be in the water. So okay I guess I'll just like be my uh, childlike excited self and just kind of enjoy the present and open it, you know, and have a lot of fun with it. So, very good. Okay. Back in the box this goes. The neat thing about these boxes, this is the um, internal box. It comes packaged in an outside box that is just about exactly the same size. The box fits in really perfectly. And I didn't know this until recently, but the Witch's Moon Company sends their boxes specifically with nothing on it at all, no indication, it's just a plain brown shipping box and on the return address it says W Moon, I think it's just W Moon Shop, I think is what it's called. So there's not the word witch or anything like that on there to, to let anybody know. And I didn't realize that the reason they do that is because there may be people who are ordering this in, sending it to their house or their place of work or whatever. And so it kind of helps to keep people's privacy, which I thought was really sweet. I thought that was a really kind of a thoughtful little thing. So, get this really nice box. And let's see what we've got. Okay. Ooh, so first thing, this is what I'm seeing. They seem to always send an oracle card or a tarot card of some kind along with the printouts. And I see a sigil here. So we'll find out about this, I guess, in a minute. And another print. 
Sí. The presentation is really nice. There are always a lot of little details and um, kind of little nice fancy things to make it feel like a present. So I really like that. This is a card from... I'm not sure which deck this is from. I want to say it's a... Uh, Oh, there are a couple and they're very similar. Whispers of, whispers of healing or something like that. This one says miracles and blessings. Everything has its gift. So, okay. That kind of is a little bit more on the same of the theme of just kind of gift and enjoying I've been working a lot actually on the concept of receiving just kind of as part of my own personal inner work lately the last month or two especially I tend to be a person who likes to be on the giving end of things I like to be the one you know if there's an inequity in the relationship I always feel a little bit better if I'm the one who's given more than the other person it makes me feel safer it makes me feel more comfortable it's so it's kind of um, you know just a little bit of a just you know like a, a shadow compulsion thing and uh, always makes me feel a little bit better to be in that situation. See, look, I'm getting uncomfortable fidgeting. See, that's another tell that that's a discomfort for me. And so I've been working a little bit on what happens if you are not the person who um, someone else owes. What if you're the person who owes? You know, what if you're the person receiving? Like, and how and how to do that in a, in a very gracious kind of way, but also still feeling safe uh, and maybe challenging that feeling. Maybe I can receive and still be safe, that kind of thing. So it's, it, it's been interesting and dicey. And I imagine there are a lot of people out there who have that same experience where they're more comfortable um, not receiving, they're more comfortable giving than, than receiving. Um, that's, I don't know, that's certainly me. Alrighty, so the theme of this one is Celestial Wisdom. And it's about the cosmos. We are made of cosmic stardust. Okay, let's see. So it seems like they're curating and sourcing tools necessary to connect to the stars and the ever-changing messages that are available to us. So this month of September, they connect and become one with celestial wisdom. And uh, connect to the items in the box, use them. Okay. So we will see. Wow, that's quite a nice. They always give um, a list of items that are included so you can see what item number it is and then they give you the write up about it. And it's on, this one has do, 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 15 things. And I did just see Mabin down here. So I think there is going to be something about Mabin in here. Maybe also about stars and also Mabin. Oh, that would be really cool that would be perfect and they give you a blank page too in case you want to use it for your own i'm so sorry about the glare i'll be right back let me see if there's something i can do that okay lighting looks okay let's see with the paper so let's look at this sigil first we've got the elements zodiac symbols let me see if i can find this on here yeah it is a sigil it is a zodiac enhancement sigil which um has an intention of strengthening the traits of my personal zodiac sign. And this is blank in the center so that I can draw my zodiac symbol in, which is Virgo. Place it near the altar in your book of shadows. I don't actually really have either of those things. Um, although I do like the idea of, of um, doing some kind of a, a recipe book or I guess a, like a grimoire where I keep little things that I'm learning and, and things like that, so beautiful. Okay. They always send a really beautiful piece of, oh, there's two. Wow. This is the Zodiac and the Celestial Sky, and it kind of comes on a hard piece of cardboard in plastic. You can wear it crinkly. What's like this ASMR. 
Um, and I like it because I have a, right up here I have a shelf and on there I have an easel and I can put different kinds of artwork and things on there. So I love that. This is the Zodiac. And I did see on here Zodiac and Celestial Sky artwork. This chart was created by Adrian Alden, A-L-D-E-N, specifically for the Witch's Moon. And it says it's not going to be offered in their online store, so it's only exclusive to the collection. And it has information on each zodiac sign, motto, date, planet, some other things. Uh, include this artwork in your Book of Shadows for reference and inspiration. Let's read what they say about me. Okay. Uh, Virgo. The motto is, I analyze. Hmm. Do I analyze? I don't know. I'd have to think about that. August 23rd to September 22nd. See, I'm being like a child. My planet is Mercury. Um, it is mutable. Traits are analytical, detail-oriented, meticulous, observant, practical. The stone is a sapphire. I do have my sapphires in this month. And the zircon. And rutilated quartz. I didn't know that. I just picked up some rutilated quartz on my birthday. We went, uh, on my birthday, I ha got to have breakfast with all of my kiddos and my hubby. And then we went to the crystal shop in our city. And it's a really nice big beautiful crystal shop it's almost like a warehouse because the prices are so good and so then we went there afterwards and I picked up some crystals and things like that and I'm gonna share that in a in a different video but I picked up some rutilated quartz while I was there a lot of little pieces of really beautiful rutilated quartz and then there were some with sand in it and some with pieces of moss in it and some that looked like I was looking at the bottom of the ocean or the bottom of a lake in the crystal beautiful and they just have buckets. They just have buckets of them. It's a stunning, stunning shop. Okay. That's me. Related quartz. Okay. Mercury rules communication, movement, and ideas. Let me see my... <laughs> I never remember my glasses. I don't know. For some reason, I'm convinced that I don't need them. Oh, dear. Okay. There we go. Virgo. Precision. So that's the illustration for Virgo. Can we see it? Yep, there you go. Oh, isn't that pretty? Water, air. Oh, that's beautiful. Really nice. I'm looking forward to doing that. I think what I'll do at the end is I'll spend some time redoing my shelf with um, maybe on the theme of whatever's in here because I really like to do that. And then I will try to put a picture in if I get to that today. We'll see if I do or not. We're still having really hot weather, everyone. <laughs> but it, it's like the globe is warming or something strange, isn't it? Wouldn't you think there was something wrong with the environment if you didn't know better that everything's rosy and fine and there's nothing at all to be worried about? All right, so our next piece of artwork is Mabin. And I don't know a lot about these um, festivals of the year and, and things like that, so I was hoping for something so I could start reading a little bit and... Let's see. Oh. oh, gosh. Sorry, I'm peeking ahead. Mabin Book of Shadows artwork, also created by Adrian Alden, exclusively for Witch's Moon, Harmony and Balance during the season of Mabin. And it talks about how modern pagans celebrate Mabin as a time of thanksgiving and the second of three harvest festivals, preceded by the grain harvest of Lamas on August 1st and the blood harvest of Samhain on October 31st. Mabin coincides with the autumnal equinox, equal night, time of equilibrium, when the veil of the seen and unseen thins, and in the northern hemisphere, the autumnal equinox designates the shortening of days and the lengthening of nights, and cooler weather, right, supposedly. I live in the north of the United States, I live in Pennsylvania, which is up north, um, it's right underneath New York. I think most people probably know where Pennsylvania is. And we're supposed to have, you know, lovely autumn weather. This is typically, uh, Pennsylvania is a very common destination because we have a lot of rolling hills and beautiful forests, very deciduous forests with a lot of different kinds of trees. So typically people will come to Pennsylvania just to drive through or take a train through the mountains 
and we're just at the tippy top of the Appalachian Mountains in the Laurel Mountains. The Laurel Highlands are what's kind of around us and so there's a lot of really beautiful um, scenery to see and really lovely trees but you have to catch it right because it depends on the amount of sun during the day and the sun during the day and I think the cold temperatures at night. And I think it might also depend on how much rain you got during the summer. And we got a lot of rain. So I think with a lot of rain, it may be mostly yellow leaves on the trees. And I think if you get a lot of hot, sunny days and cold nights, then I think you tend to get the more orange and reds and pinks and really vibrant colors. Because we have had a lot of years, you know, where it's just all, all the leaves are yellow or they stay green and then they go yellow brown and then they fall off. Oh, Mabin is Virgo and Libra. Oh, lovely. Oh, this looks really nice. Looks really, really nice. So, I'm looking forward to digging into that. Ooh! Looks like the color is going to be a dark blue. Let's see. We've got some beautiful... I saved all mine from last month. <laughs> packing things, and I saved all of these in a little... in a zip bag. And it will probably be in someone's birthday or Christmas gift later this year. First thing I see here are some herbs. This is, this one's called the Astral Dance. This one's called mm, Compass. I can't read the second bit. Compass something. We'll look on the paper. And this one is, I can't read it at all. Sorry. It's beautiful handwriting, I'm just not sure. Let's have a little looky, shall we? Okay, so here we go. Astral Dance was a sacred smoke blend created to be burned on charcoal in a cauldron or a small dish. I don't have a cauldron. I do have a small little silver burn dish that I burn joss paper and things like that in. Uh, it's made of mugwort, sage, and spearmint. I love mugwort. I do have mugwort that I will smudge with. Mugwort smells wonderful. It's my favorite. I'm not a fan of sage. And there's some lovely instructions. This is about banishing negativity. It can also be burned by your bedside for dreams that bring answers or even questions that hold importance in your life. Because questions are really super important. When my kids are right around 16, 17 years old. We always covered, I homeschooled my kids, I think probably most of you know that, and we followed a Waldorf Steiner type of approach. And right around the age of 16 or 17, we usually cover the story of Parsifal. Percival, it's from the, it's a grail legend. He's one of the grail um, knights, and he, and he leaves his home uh, to go off on an adventure dressed really crazy by his mother. And um, <laughs> I should... I'll try to remember to pop in right here the name of the book that I always read with my kids when we do it. It's by Charles Kovacs, K-O-V-A-C-S, who was a Waldorf school teacher in Scotland, originally from Germany, but he taught in Scotland at the Steiner School, I believe in Edinburgh. And so he wrote a lot of books based on his lessons, and so I really loved having those because he really understood a lot of the anthroposophical teachings and was able to translate that in a way that I think makes it interesting for kids to understand, you know, 16, 17 are kids, but, and so in the Parsifal story, he has to go looking for the Grail King, and he finds the Grail King, as you probably know if you've read it, he finds the Grail King first thing, but he doesn't know the right questions to ask, so he misses the Grail King, and he has to go through his whole journey and come back around. The importance of asking, of having the right question, is sometimes more important than having the answer, so that's really cool. I love that. This is Herba John. Yes, it's St. John's Wort. So, to assist in recognizing signs and messages. We're all on the same, we're on the same theme here. It can be placed in a pouch, placed on your altar, protection spells, things like that. So, not for consumption. Don't, I won't make tea out of it. There's not enough really for tea anyway. And this last thing is called compass weed. That's what's called compass weed. I'm not familiar with compass weed. Oh, rosemary. Rosemary. One of the oldest herbs used for banishing negativity and purifying energy. And you can also place it under your pillow. Interesting. Oh, nice. There's an oil in here. And they put it 
in bubble wrap and then they put it in a plastic bag. What? Fantastic customer service. I know some people had problems with these last month with the oil bottle that leaked. It was just taped up really, really well in bubble wrap, but it's still leaked and it's oil. So it just kind of oozes out everywhere. You know, there's not much you can do, but they put it in this very, very heavy duty plastic bag. What brilliant customer service. I love these guys. This is amazing. And what have we got here for our oil? Starry Wisdom Magical Anointing Oil. Beautiful oils, they do. Last month it was called Freya's Oil, um, and it smelled absolutely amazing. Roses and jasmine, and I want to see there was Lang Lang maybe in that. And I actually used I used it as an, was using it as an oil for different things, but I also have a tiny little roller bottle, and I poured some of it into the with some of the the contents from the bottom of the bottle into the roller bottle, so that I could, if I wanted to put it right on skin, I could anoint right on skin with the roller bottle, which was really neat. Um, I like putting it that particular one I was using over my solar plexus chakra, you know, right the solar plexus right there, to kind of help me feel strong, you know, like Freya warrior energy. So this is Starry Wisdom Anointing Oil. And it's got beautiful little Watsies thingies in the bottom. Look at that. Oh, look at the sparkles. Look at the glitter. I have two daughters. I think some of you have met my younger daughter. You'll probably never meet my older daughter. She's a children's librarian. I don't know if she'd ever feel like coming on, just because she might not want to. Come on, she's a children's librarian, and so every time I see glitter, I think of her, because when I ride in her car, I get out covered in glitter, because she does so many kids' programs, and they use a lot of glitter. All right, Starry Wisdom Magical Anointing Oil. Let's see what they say about it. Okay, here we go. Cedarwood, lavender. I like cedarwood. Lavender and Rosemary Essential Oil, Mugwort, Leaf of Silver, a Lemurian Quartz, and um, a special blend. It's called Of Their Night Air Magical Oil. Oh yeah, from our personal cabinet of witchery. Oh, it's nice. I can smell the mugwort. Oh, it's lovely. It's really kind of autumnal. I would call it just a neutral, clean, smoky leafy like leaves in the autumn when you're walking in the woods do you know what i mean okay next is some more bath salts this is called luna okay so this is the energy of the goddess luna instinct creativity luck femininity water and safety those are all very nice things chamomile essential oil lavender and chamomile they have also included a special mixture of our moon magical oil from our personal cabinet of witchery and it's nice that they actually give you instructions here that if you if you can't do a bath, you could still do a warm salt water that you could pour over your body, you know, so if you just had a standing shower and you can't bathe in it. So that's really nice. That's lavender. There's a ton of lavender in that. Yeah. yeah it's very, very lavendery, and in fact, on top, you can see... like a picture frame. Oh, it is some kind of a picture frame. Oh, there's something in here. Okay. It's a piece of some kind of rock. And it's in a, this isn't glass, it's sort of a, a plastic, like a stretchy plastic. There's the, let's see what it is. Oh my gosh. You guys, this is a shooting star specimen. We have been working to source these shooting stars for many moons. Ha ha ha. They, um, this is a meteorite known as Campo del Cielo Iron Meteorite. Shooting star fell from the sky 4,700 years ago, a thousand kilometers northwest of Buenos Aires, Argentina. Uh, the meteorite is now a protected specimen and can only be harvested with special permission from their government. The specimen is inside a floating frame. Ah, look. It's like I'm in a bubble. Have you seen a shooting star? 
I remember seeing Shooting Star when I think I was in high school. That would have been in the mid 80s. And um, I, I remember a teacher saying that there was a meteor shower or something like that, and we could go outside. And I went outside and I laid in the yard and I watched the sky for a while and I saw one particular star which seemed like it was glowing a little bit pink or red and then it started wiggling and it started moving and it wiggled like wiggle 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 have you ever seen that and the color was flickering and changing and then it it moved across the sky and then it went zoom like that and then I've seen them up as an adult a bunch of times because I try to find out when they are and I would take my kids outside and now they're big enough to take themselves outside and we still frequently go outside to watch meteor showers. Our local museum too has a great big meteor. Two feet around or bigger. Might even be more like two to three feet around. It's a gigantic iron meteor and you can actually touch it. And it's been in that museum for I think about a hundred years and so it has a lot of uh, worn spots on it as people have touched it but they're not going to wear it away. There's no danger of that. It's uh, it's a large meteor and it's not going anywhere, I'm sure. It's, it's 86 degrees Fahrenheit here. I don't know what that is, but that's like hot weather. That's, you know, summertime, it's, it's proper hot weather. We got incense. It's again, it's got kind of a musky, manly kind of smell. Seeker of knowledge, incense. It is a woody evergreen aroma. It's good for divination and reading, study, or documenting. They use it for, for when they're using a book of shadows. I bet it would be good for tarot reading. It is nice. It's woody. It's a lovely smell. Seeker of knowledge incense. That's great. I'm definitely a seeker of knowledge. Okay, next. I learned from last time the candles are all dressed with a lot of herbs and things like that. So I learned after the last one to open it very, very cautiously. And this candle, this is going to be an Elder Guides Enchanted Spell Candle. That sounds nice, doesn't it? Whoever names all these things does a wonderful job because the names are very evocative and kind of bring out a lot of um, imagination and things in me. I really, I like the names. It's kind of a purpley navy blue color with a lot of sparkles, glitter, and lots and lots of dried herbs and flowers and things on the bottom there. Elder Guide's Enchanted Spell Candle. It's for connecting to celestial wisdom known as As Above, So Below. So there's mugwort, spearmint, eucalyptus, rosemary, and peppermint. An astral oil from their personal cabinet of witchery into the rolling of the candle. I can definitely smell some um, sandalwood, so I think there might be that in that astral oil. Um, accompanied by a spell from a book of shadows. Now there's something that's been in here from the beginning. <laughs> it's been super tantalizing because it's the biggest thing in here. But I wanted to leave it, well it's not completely last because there's one more. So let's see what this is. This is a dark blue velvet bag. And it feels like a deck. I think it's a deck. Astrological oracle cards. Ooh, let's crack this open. Okay. Here's the Oh, it's lovely. Really nice hard box. Pretty little pull tab. This is beautiful. Who is this by? I don't see any name on here. Lunea Weatherstone and Antonella Castelli. Artwork by Antonella Castelli. Lunea Weatherstone. That's an appropriate name, isn't it? It's a very nice big... It looks like it's going to be in all the languages you know how they do yeah so the first looks like the first 50 pages are in English okay let's just see the zodiac signs gotcha. like there's Aries oopsie are we gonna have any there there we go okay so Aries and Taurus 
and Gemini. The artwork's beautiful. It's a kind of art deco type. It reminds me of the Tara Muha. Leo. Let's take a look at Virgo. Oh, she's beautiful with purple on. Purple's my favorite color. Isn't she pretty? There's Virgo. Very nice. So we've got all the signs. The cardstock's not bad. It's not a very big deck, so I'm sure it's good for what it's for. And then we've got the sun. Soul and the moon, Luna. Beautiful. Mercury and Venus. I'm always so nervous when the cards stick, especially when they're a little glossy. And Mars, Jupiter. Saturn, here we go, Uranus, Neptune, so there's Pluto. Well, I look forward to looking at this. They say it's Astrological Oracle Cards with Pouch, 22 cards, Art Nouveau Oracle Deck, Metallicized, Star Signs and Planetary Cards to pull wisdom from. Information for multiple spreads, including in-depth information on each star and planetary connection. Um, they chose this specific deck based on the beautiful artwork and the meaningful readings that they have been blessed with over the years. And I think there's one more item in this pretty silky silver bag. And it says, I'm going to read about it before I look because I want to be surprised. They put a piece of smoky quartz in this collection to assist you in connecting to the phenomena outside of yourself. Smoky quartz is grounding. Um, and it, they also talk about the ethereal magnet that smoky quartz holds, allowing fairies, spirit guides, and higher sources of wisdom to come into manifestation. Help bring your dreams into physical reality to place you in a celestial mindset. And then they give an affirmation to use with the smoky quartz. Love quartz, I like smoky quartz, let's see. Ooh, wow, golly. That's, wow, that's huge. Look at that. It's got a little bit of silk on it from the silky bag. My daughter Gracie is so into smoky quartz right now, I'm going to have to hide this. She's going to borrow it. Oh, how perfect for this time of year too, especially as it goes light. It's very light and it's actually quite transparent here, translucent up on this, this part. It's hard to see. Yeah, it's hard to see on the camera. And then just the tip is, is darker. But even, the, even then, I can still see through the crystal. So, oh wow, it's beautiful. What a nice box. They just keep outdoing themselves, don't they? I can't wait to read all of this. Celestial Wisdom box. Celestial Wisdom. I have a hard time saying that much why Celestial. From the Witch's Moon. And this is the monthly box. It is a, it's a buy subscription. You sign up for it and then it automatically renews every month. And so that's, that's what I'm doing. It isn't inexpensive. It's expensive. It was, I think it's 50, $53, 50 some dollars, something like that. It's not cheap, but it's something I'm like doing on purpose for myself, um, as a gift. And I'm just looking forward to doing it. Hopefully for as long as possible. I would love it if I could go the whole year and do it, you know? before there's a penny pinching and I have to cut something. You know, I'd hate to, to cut this. I'm hoping to enjoy it as long as I can. That's it, I hope you enjoyed the video. Again, I thank you very much for spending some time with me and I look forward to next time. So, bye-bye everyone. See you soon.